Tech Stimulus Showdown, a bipartisan group from the House and Senate unveiled a roughly $900 billion compromise offering a route between House Democrats' last $2.4 trillion bill and the Senate Republicans' recent $650 billion proposal. This new proposal sets aside $288 billion for the Paycheck Protection Program, another on $180 billion for unemployment insurance and $45 billion for transportation. Joining me right now is National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow. Larry, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for being here. We just heard from Andy Biggs from Arizona. He said he doesn't think anything gets done in the in the lame duck. You would know better. What do you think? I think right now, by the way, thanks for having me back, Maria. Happy Thanksgiving and so forth. Uh, I think I don't want to make any predictions. What I know okay. is that there's discussions going on up on the Hill between committee chair people on both houses, on both sides of the aisle. Uh, on our side, Secretary Mnuchin, uh, continues to handle the freight, and he is in constant discussions. Uh, I do not think there's going to be any gigantic three to four trillion dollar assistance bill. I think that's off the table. Our view hasn't really changed very much. Uh, we still would like uh, targeted assistance for PPP, small businesses, uh, some unemployment assistance extensions, uh, some help for airlines. Uh, other small businesses, um, schools, you know, anything related to COVID going back to school. Um, uh, Mr. Mnuchin, as you know, uh, has pulled back. Uh, we're going to abide by the CARES Act December 31st. Uh, some 550 billion or so uh, will be returned to the Treasury as per the Congress. That will be extinguished. However, and this is really the key point where we are. We would like to repurpose that money and repurpose it to key areas such as PPP small businesses and unemployment assistance and maybe some direct checks mailed from the Treasury Department to those uh, who are having a rough time. So let's repurpose that money. It's right there. It's a big chunk of it. It's uh, nearly $600 billion, actually. So why repurpose it, Larry, and what does that mean? I mean, does that mean that uh, a potential incoming uh, in administration uh, does not have access to that, to, to, to allocate it the way they want to allocate it? Well, look, they can't. You know, these are congressional laws. This was done by the CARES Act um, last spring and, you know, with some small amendments along the way. There are other things going on right now regarding appropriations bills and maybe a continuing resolution. But again, these are laws. This was the intent of the legislation, December 31st. Now, there's nothing that prevents the Congress, okay, from working together in a bipartisan way to provide some further assistance, maybe another three months, maybe another six months. Uh, I see it rather more as an insurance policy for the economy. The economy is very strong. I keep reading in the, in the major media organs uh, how bad the economy is. It just isn't so. Take a look at the numbers. Maybe we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. But I'm just saying we're not, yeah. we're not in the political game here. We're not trying to limit or tie anybody's hands. Uh, Mr. Mnuchin has said several times he's just um, abiding by congressional laws. And you have this money that wasn't used, right? And it's called $600 billion. Why not repurpose it and use it? Uh, Secretary Mnuchin is also talking about avoiding a government shutdown. I want to get your take on that. He answered questions on Capitol Hill yesterday about whether the government uh, is uh, going to reach a deal to avoid a December 11th shutdown. What do you think about that, Larry? Well, I, I think the secretary and I definitely would like to avoid a shutdown. I think a lot of people would like to avoid uh, a shutdown. I mean, what's happening here is you've got... Um, Discussions about an omnibus appropriations bill that might fund the government for the next year. That would probably be a very good thing. You've got various uh, ideas regarding continuing resolutions. It could be short term or long term. I prefer the omnibus bill. Uh, you've got the National Defense Appro uh, Authorization Bill, which should go through. But uh, again, President Trump here has intervened, and I think very importantly, this whole business about uh, liability shields for the big uh, tech companies, for the uh, social media companies, they should probably uh, have a pullback on their liability shields. Right now, they're getting a free ride to be editors and publishers and to censor certain conservative messaging. We don't like that one bit, and the president believes the NDAA is one way to amend that and make it better. 
So, Larry, then the president can do that. He can just force that the NDAA doesn't have that 230 section in there and then it goes away. It doesn't need to go through Congress. Is that one way of eliminating Section 230 that the president no. can actually push through? No, no, Maria. How does that I, work? I think it uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it might be part of the uh, NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, but this would require, his, his changes uh, would be required in law, okay? There'd have to be legislation. Now, let me say, we have had some executive orders uh, to that extent. We've talked about this endlessly for weeks and weeks and weeks, uh, unfair prejudice against conservative uh, messaging and so forth. But it would stand Absolutely. the test of time better if it were a piece of legislation. The president can't force it, but what he's saying is, and he said this I think as recently as yesterday, he would uh, veto the NDAA unless there are some changes in that Section 230 of the Telecommunications uh, Decency Act. He's not dictating the language yet, but he wants an amendment that would essentially curb, in some way, shape, or form, the uh, unbridled liability protection uh, shield that these firms have. They shouldn't have it. It doesn't jive with law in this uh, other law in this country and in places like uh, Britain and on, uh, in Europe. So he's weighed in. It's very important. And I hope it is, they can make a compromise on this. But uh, something's got to happen. Yeah. You know this. You've reported this. All these big uh, social media companies. Isn't it odd? Conservative messaging is taken down. Not liberal left wing socialist messaging. Yeah. I mean, to me, yeah. that's, that's the worst part of this whole story. Yeah, meanwhile, you've got the, the head of Iran saying death to America, and, you know, Ayatollah Khomeini's uh, tweets are just fine, no flagging there. Welcome back. We are back with National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow. Larry, earlier this hour, we saw the ADP number come out, 307,000 jobs added to the private sector. That was below analyst expectations. Have things weakened in the month of November, Larry? I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think that's a good indicator uh, of monthly jobs at all, with all due respect to the people that put that together. Look, we're seeing, you know, continuing claims, including pandemic claims. Those claims have come way, way down. In fact, I think they're nearly two million down from the last jobs report uh, roughly one month ago. We get a new one on Friday for the month of December, as you know. Look, across the board, this is so important because people keep telling me the economy is weakening. Look, uh, consumer spending, very strong. Consumers have huge hordes of cash from a high saving rate. Um, we had tremendous CapEx, uh, X uh, defense and so forth, transportation. Durable goods orders, strong. Shipments, strong. That creates jobs. That creates higher wages and more gross GDP uh, output. Um, Housing, we are still very much in a housing boom. Mortgage rates are actually slipping down a little bit at the long end. Inventory is low. Uh, they're going to have to be rebuilt. That process has just barely begun to meet the demand for automobiles and other consumer goods. I, I see a very strong economy. As you know, the Atlanta Fed GDP now model is looking for 11 percent in the fourth quarter. Um, that's their estimate, not ours. I'm just saying, though, that shows you how far they come. I think they started at two yeah. or three percent. By the way, last points on this. Uh, we have data on credit cards. Credit cards are now turning positive. Credit card volume is turning positive, um, up four percent year on year. Debit cards, as you may know, yeah. have always been very strong and continue to be strong. Now, we should talk yeah. about the virus for a second. Uh, that's a challenge. Uh, we're getting some improvements in the um, northern Great Plains and the Rockies. On the other hand, the two coasts and the Sun Belt, uh, not so good. Uh, at the Vice President Pence's uh, COVID uh, task force meeting yesterday, our experts warned that the Christmas season could be tough. There may be more spikes yeah. in COVID. Let me make two points. Number one, one, we must mitigate, must mitigate yep. masking well, we have and to live distancing. With it, right? and hygiene. That is correct. That is so crucial right now. And that works. Number right. two, help is on the way. The vaccines are literally a week or two yeah. on the way. And they're going to be spread and distributed. And that's a fabulous story. Yeah. Help is on the way, but masking really and distancing is. in the meantime. 